Games are how we learned to survive on the Serengeti, you know, the running and, and um, you know, like the ways that people teach, they were through games. It's only been recent that we expected so little of games. I think now we're entering the, the stage where we can expect a lot more and we can use it to teach the things that are going to count in the new age. My name's Nicole Bradford, and I am the executive director of the Transformative Technology Lab at Sophia University, and I co-founded the lab and also the Transformative Technology Conference. And we focus on technology for mental and emotional well-being and the intersection of neuroscience, behavioral science, psychology, and tech for the benefit of all mankind. We have a wide variety of technologies that people are working with. We have people who are working on emotion recognition, which is one of my favorites. Uh, and then there's people who are working on um, pattern recognition through behavior, which I find really compelling. There's also consumer EEG. There's uh, biosensor, biosensors, biodata, neurofeedback, biofeedback. We actually track 11 different areas of technology where people are able to either measure, influence, or stimulate human psychology. And so it's a, it's, a, you know, it's a big field. And the best way to think about transformative technology is not that it's going to be like a thin, vertical type of technology. It's a use case of technology across the board. You know, there are some people, it's like I had a conversation with someone the other day, and they said, they asked me if I was afraid of AI. And I said, no, I'm not afraid of AI. And they said, well, you know, why not? <laughs> and, uh, and so my response to them is I was like, fear takes you out of the conversation. You know, fear reduces the conversation. We actually have to be all in on these conversations about um, the exponential technologies that are, are dramatically changing our lives, like we need to have conversations about these things. And when people become terrified of it so that we can't collectively think about it, then they're taking themselves out of the conversation. And it's not stopping, like none of this is going away. And in fact, we need these technologies because the problems that we have at this point are ones where we need the technology to solve them. So it's almost like we're on a we're on a street and the way that we, you know, that's got a we're on a street that's got a dead end. The only way to get past the dead end is the technology that then turns it into a cul-de-sac. And then the only way out of the cul-de-sac is the end of human suffering. If you look at the global numbers on depression, not just current depression, but the World Health's estimates on what the levels of depression will be, and then you look at the number of schools that teach and train practitioners to support mental health, the gap between the estimate and the amount of people these schools can churn out to, to close the gap would take hundreds of years of education just to close the gap. And so to reject technology, to say that only humans can help humans, that only, you know, that human development can only happen one-on-one -on -one, is to accept that millions of people will not get help. Like it's really like, and when people get a little choked up about it, when people make these pronouncements about what role they think technology doesn't have, they are not thinking about all the people who are not getting the support that they need. And I don't think they mean it in a bad way, but they just haven't thought it through. And so for me, I'm unwilling to sit back and say, um, you know, only humans can help humans. Um, and that, you know, technology doesn't have a role in how we become more human and how we learn Humanity 101 and Humanity 201 and Humanity 301 
because, you know, at this point with 7 billion people and, you know, in that continuing, um, you know, we need the, the added support and insight. And I think it can help us, you know, I think it can help us move into a, a new age where, you know, we expand our mental and emotional capacity. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a transhumanist. I have no intention of uploading myself to a computer. I think that we haven't even begun to, we haven't even begun to max out this yet. Like we haven't even reached the, you know, the, the boundaries of what this is. And so I think combining what the wisdom traditions were onto, like those people were onto something with the power that comes uh, and the, the precision that comes uh, from being able to have, you know, uh, data and, um, you know, to look, to look inside the human body and the human mind, those two things together, I think something quite special would come out of that. I think technology is a tool and we have to develop um, etiquette and understanding. It's like the first time you, here's an example, it's like the very first time you have, you know, tequila or chocolate cake. It often, you often have too much. And then you get to a point where you're like, oh, only a little bit of that, only a little bit of that. But, you know, if you think about it, like I just had a notice on Facebook. I had my 10 year anniversary yesterday on Facebook, but that's actually a very short period of time. You know, 10 years is a long time, but it's also a short period of time. So, you know, whenever something comes out in the beginning, people use it. They use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. And then they start to ask questions about, is this how I want to use it? You know, what does this mean for me? And then they start to develop ways that um, allows them to, you know, use it in a way that, you know, is the balance for them. Because different people also are going to have different thresholds. You know, we're not all the same. And um, so there'll be, you know, some people will only have one day that they use technology and other people you know, we'll do it every day, but then they have a practice that helps them really balance themselves. I mean, I think that the thing is, is that the ability to understand ourselves on the deepest level um, and the, the added information that we can gather from technology and then add that to, you know, what we currently today understand about humans and the additional things that we will understand about humans, um, you know, and using using the you know technology to deepen our understanding, because there's only so many things that you can get from the powers of human observation on the surface, and so being able to really deepen that, um, those two things together, uh, I think is where we can discover more about ourselves and discover who it is we really are and what we, you know, are capable of, you know. So I'm pro, I'm very pro-technology. I don't have any issues with it. I also meditate all the time. So I'm both things. Um, I don't reject one side or the other. And I think that the, the path forward for humanity probably is a blend between the two. You know, what brought me to meditation wasn't, like I wasn't miserable or anything like that. I just thought constantly, like I thought all the time. And so I had this sense that I was somehow wearing myself out. Like, you know, if there, if there was a pair of shoes that you just wore all the time. It was like that. And so I just knew that I needed to meditate because I'd heard that meditation helps you think less. And so I started out with, you know, trying a few things here and there. But when I really had my change, it was a Vipassana retreat in Japan, about an hour and a half outside of Kyoto. And uh, it was dramatic. It changed everything. I do, you know, know quite a few people who they believe that technology is on its own is the solution and it's going to save us. Technology, again, is just a tool. 
So just as, you know, so the thing that I would say to the rejectionist, it's just a tool, it's how we use it. Let's get some maturity about how we use it. And for the people who believe that it's going to be, you know, the thing on its own that saves us, it's forgetting that it's the humans that are using the technology. And so that's why, you know, what, what you know, needs to happen on top of that is the growth and development of human beings. You know, that's why the, the ability to raise the skill set um, through scalable, accessible, affordable means, which is enabled by technology, to raise the overall skill set, to raise the floor of skills, to help people get a handle on fear. And so what's interesting about technology and the intersection between technology and psychology is that we can raise the, I believe that we can, by increasing the level of self-awareness through sensors and training, we can raise the skill set, uh, lower the fear, and in that gap, in that, in that moment of exhalation, uh, we can get busy working on the problems that are really facing mankind. And so the people who are like, it's just technology, are forgetting the human part. Um, and the people who are like, it's all the technology, are you know, forgetting um, the urgency that we have and that you know, there are a lot of people who are suffering. This whole chunk of how we teach people to become human, to discover who they are, to find their gift, to fulfill and reach their potential. All of that is catch as catch can, uh, which is really kind of scary too because the established system that teaches reading, writing, and arithmetic, a lot of what it teaches is going to be done by software. Anything you want to know, any fact you want to know, you can find out on the internet. So things that are more important is teamwork, problem solving, strategy, cooperation. And if you look at the data in the research, games are extraordinary for teaching that. They do a really good job at teaching that. So we actually have something that digitally works very well, but because there has been this, you know, this, this separation between digital and physical, we couldn't take these digital models and put them on top of the real world to you know, teach people the skills that going forward are going to be the ones that actually count, that actually really, really matter. So I'm really excited. I think there's gonna be a new age of gaming and I think we're gonna expand you know, what we think it is. You know, if you think about games and gaming, you know, games are how we learned to survive on the Serengeti, you know, the running and, and um, you know, like the ways that people teach, they were through games. It's only been recent that we expected so little of games. I think now we're entering the, the stage where we could expect a lot more and we can use it to teach the things that are going to count in the new age.